One of the things that I love best about mathematics, and I know Mrs. Lee is very similar because when I get excited about learning or teaching something and I show Mrs. Lee, she gets the same excited face that I do, um, is that mathematics is hugely intertwined. Um, like a good story, you know, where you're like, oh, this plot line is coming over here and you don't expect it has any connection, but then it's like, oh, it all makes sense, right? Now, this topic within mathematics is one of the most intertwined, which is really saying something, okay? So when we put this table together, you might recall, I was trying to focus your attention really on thinking about concavity and its relationship to the first derivative. But hopefully, it did not escape your attention that here in this, uh, I'll highlight it for you. Sorry, it's very dark, I can't see. Um, here in this middle row, uh, let's pick an appropriate color like this. Right in here, Right? There's some things that we've been dealing with already over the past like couple of weeks. You're like, wait a second, we know about these shapes and we have dealt with them way before we introduced the second derivative, concavity, all that kind of thing. Now, the implication of this is everything that we know about these things fits like a really snug jigsaw piece puzzle into um, what we were looking at with the first derivative and trying to determine stationary points. There's a whole other path to be able to determine what kind of stationary point you have that doesn't have to do with the first derivative. It has to do with the second. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now is remember about a week ago I gave you this enormous flow chart. Do you remember that? And it's like a big mess and then we sort of, um, we filled it in. Remember this guy? Right? And I hope you've still got it somewhere. And I highlighted to you and said, why did I design it with this big empty spot on the right hand side? Well the reason is because I was going to fill it and that's exactly what we're going to do now. Please turn over the piece of paper which I just popped onto your desk. Now what you can see here looks like what you started with last week but I've typed in a bunch of parts for you, the parts you already wrote in. Okay, So you start with an original function if you want to know about stationary points, firstly, and I actually did leave something off, so maybe you can add this back in. The first thing you want to do on the top half is what? You want to find... Sorry. Thank you very much, that's right. You want to find out where your stationary points are, right? So our word for that was locate. Okay? Now to locate a stationary point, of course, we're looking for where the first derivative is equal to zero. So um, that, that top part there, we knew completely how to do that last week. But then after that, when we looked at the second half of this, uh, other color, the second half of course was not about locating the stationary points, it's about once you've located them, can you determine their nature? Tell me what kind of stationary points they are, right? Determine nature. Last week we basically said, okay, well, just do some more stuff with that first derivative, right? Um, importantly, like look at a table of values over here. Look at whether you're increasing then decreasing or vice versa. And then that'll tell you whether it's a minimum or a maximum or a horizontal point of inflection. But now we know that there's another way. We can choose instead of going through the first derivative, we can choose, whoopsie daisy, to go via the second derivative. Now, you might notice I've skipped a box. I'll come back to that box that I've skipped in a second. But let's just take what we already know, because you actually, in that table we've filled out today, you, you can help me out with this, right? In the second derivative, what is it that we're looking for that tells us what kind of a stationary point it is? Bashan? If we put some x value, right, so I, fa I found a particular x value. I'm like, oh, there's a stationary point. It's at x equals 2, but I don't know what kind of stationary point it is. Okay, what am I going to do with that? Yeah. Okay, the concavity tells me whether it's maximum or minimum. The concavity tells me. Now, sorry, I'm just pondering for myself here. We're going to do an example, okay? So I'm just going to jot down in here. Sorry, I'm, ta I'm talking and thinking at the same time, okay? We're going to do d squared y on dx, uh, dx squared, I should say. And what we're looking for is whether it's positive or negative or zero. Basically, we're looking for its sine, S-I-G-N. Sorry, I realized I wrote it in the wrong spot, my bad. So we're looking for whether it's positive or negative or zero. Okay. Now you've got you've got this table right in front of you. Okay. So have a look at it. Right. Um, let's just suppose here's our table. Right. Let's suppose we look at that spot and we're like, oh, the second derivative is negative. Okay. 
What does that tell you about what kind of stationary point it is? Second derivative negative. It's concave down, which means it's a maximum. Does that make sense? It's a maximum. So if the second derivative is, oh, here we are. If the second derivative is negative, I'm going to end on the maximum turning point. Does that make sense? Okay. So this dotted line here in the middle, oopsie daisy, this is what happens if the second derivative is negative. Straight away, no table of values required. You're like, oh, the second derivative happens to be uh, negative 3. Bam, I'm done. It's going to be a maximum. Okay? By contrast, if I find out that the second derivative has a positive value, like say it's 1, okay, what kind of stationary point is that? It's going to be a, a minimum, right? Because it's concave up, which means that you're at the bottom of that uh, function. Does that make sense? Concave up, so that's a minimum, isn't it? So a positive second derivative tells you you have a minimum over here. Okay.